Hey folks, this is a fun one on the farm today that I thought I'd do, especially for all the women and the young ladies out there. I pulled down a couple of our um, newer crossbows here and I've been wanting to do this for a while because the topic has come up numerous times and I was just kind of looking for the right person to do it with and Tabitha here is, well, she's just been the willing participant to do it with. She enjoys archery, um, she has a nice bow, and she's done a fair amount of crossbow shooting um, with the competitors line, the, the Baronets, and um, today I'd like to put her in front of a couple crossbows that are a little bit more high end and see what she likes and dislikes about them. And this is coming from the perspective of somebody that's never worked with these today. As you see, I opened the coffin there on the um, R26 um, Raven. And the other one I'm going to put her up against is the Mission. These are substantially um, better crossbows than what she's been shooting. So she's a five-year shooter here. So she's been doing this now for five years. Um, she started in her teens. And um, she's taken several deer with crossbows. And she's into, you know, turkey hunting and a few other things. But she's never had the um, ability or chance to play with real high-end equipment. She's played with crossbows between about... I'd say $300 and $900, and she's never had the opportunity to pull out of a coffin, you know, um, a, a, a crossbow over a grand, and, and of different companies too, and kind of go side by side, head to head, and see what she thinks. So one of the questions I get when I help out the 4-Hers and stuff, especially those that are interested in crossbows, is, you know, what can a woman shoot, and what can they shoot comfortably? And here you've got a person, you know, that's, um, pushing a little over five feet, um, you know, weighing 100 some pounds and got pretty good muscle on her. Um, but what, what can she shoot? And I can tell you that the crossbow she's been shooting, she's not been as happy with because they're wide in the front, they're longer crossbows, and they tend to be a little forward heavy on it. So I wanted her to try these because um, these are very similar in a couple regards. And I thought it'd be interesting to see how she does with them. Now, the companies make other crossbows than this, don't get me wrong. So I could have picked different ones. But the R26 I wanted to pick because of its axle for her. And I wanted to pick the uh, Sub 1XR from Mission. These are two very, very good companies. I mean, basically, you know, you're dealing with a Matthews company and a Raven company. And although the bows, you know, these crossbows act a little differently, they're still somewhat similar. They're both more small, compact, 400 feet per second bows. I'm going to give you what I've got for specs, not the book specs. I'm a little over 30 inches on the uh, Missions uh, Sub 1 XR, and we're pushing uh, just shy of 25 and a half on that Raven R26. And then when you start looking at you know the width, you can see there's a difference too. So right now, neither one of these are cocked, so we're going to use that as kind of a standard. Pushing, um, I think it's actually closer to 12 once I line up. It's hard on the camera here to get both axles indirectly, but when I line it up on one side and the other, she's just over 11. And uh, on this one here, she's pushing over 16. Not a ton of difference. These aren't real wide. She's coming from a bow crossbow right now that's pushing almost 22 across the front, and she's got a distance on hers of about 34. So these are much more compact for her than what she's used to. And I think that's going to make for a really good video today. We, we plan on shooting a lot. Here she is just picking them up and kind of getting used to them and kind of shouldering them. I think right off the bat, she picks this one up and goes, wow, it's light. And there's a lot of truth to that. That, that is a very light bow. Um, Raven's coming in at 400 feet per second, six and a half pounds, 26 inch long bow roughly. Um, you know, uncocked. Mine's pushing closer to 11, but whatever. Power stroke is 9 inches with a draw for it of at least 12 pounds. A lot of kinetic energy, I think 140 on the kinetics. Mission is coming in at 410 feet per second, 30-inch bow, you know, supposedly running about 7.5 pounds um, with an 80% let off and a nice power stroke too of around that 14, 15 inches. So as she's holding these, you can start to see she's... She's doing what she does a lot of times with her other crossbow. She's starting to tip back. I've seen her at the range a few times with it. She's kind of getting used to the shouldering of this one. I tried to set these up um, so that they'd be similar for a young shooter. 
um, try to get the eye relief right for. But you know, there's going to have to be a little bit of tweaking here once I get to the get to the line. I'm not going to bore you with some of that stuff, but we're going to get it so that she can definitely shoot them. But I also kind of wanted to show you what we were up against as far as specs they give you and specs we have. So one of the things that she said right away is, well, you know, these crossbows both feel light. Because again, what she's shooting is a much cheaper crossbow that's much more heavy. So what it weighed in for us, 10 pounds, about 10 pounds. And you remember that's, it's got its quiver holder on there. It's got some dampeners on it. And this one does have the um, uh, retraction system that, that you can add on to it for the mission. Um, Ravens comes uh, built in for, for cocking right into the bow, so you can't take it off, and it's reading 8.3. So again, that's how these are weighing for us with you know no, no quivers and bolts or arrows, whatever you want to call them, not get into that argument. They're both shooting about the same distance, same length. The Ravens got a little larger knock on the back of it that's specially designed for it um, versus the um, standard mission bolt there. And again, I'm using factory bolts for this with her. I'm not trying to screw her up and, you know, put something fancy on one versus another. I really wanted her to just start by um, getting used to the, to the cocking devices. And you can see right off the bat, um, she's, you know, shot crossbows before, so she's used to figuring them out. She's just figuring this one out. The mission is, you know, unique in the sense that you can shoot it without the cocking device, but when it comes to women on the range, I'm not picking on them, they seem to have a little difficulty taking those two ropes, stepping on the center of those crossbows and pulling them back. It doesn't matter whether it's a cheap eight, nine hundred dollar or less bow, or if it's a middle range, eight hundred to a thousand dollar bow, or if we're talking a crossbow that's well over a grand pushing two, they seem to have a little bit more difficulty with it. So I set this in motion with both of them using the the crank and I, I kind of wanted to see what she liked and didn't like with them so here she goes she's using the the Matthews first uh, this particular um, setup um, she's just kind of getting used to she's she's looking for a foothold here she's she's not used to how these sit on the ground remember the the cheaper bows that she's used to and um, normally have like a like a foot bell at the bottom of them and she's just not used to putting her feet in the the area of what some would call the danger zone, but she's, she's figuring it out. And I'm letting her just kind of struggle through this a little bit. I want her to not make a mistake, so I'm there to make sure she doesn't break a very expensive crossbow. But yeah, at the same point in time, I want her to just kind of struggle through it and see how she does. Sometimes that's the only way you can learn the equipment. Unfortunately, when you go to the store to buy one of these, let's say you walked into a fleet farm to pick out a raven, you know, you don't really get to shoot it. And that's what makes it difficult. These 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 kind of bows, you know, I'd, I'd highly recommend when you're working with a crossbow like this, go to a decent shop, um, you know, where you can actually, you know, have the guys kind of fit it to you and put the scope at the right spot and let you go to the range and shoot it. Um, don't buy these things in just an over-the-counter place because there's a huge difference when you start feeling them and working with them. Again, here she's just... She's just figuring out, you know, the handle. She's being a little cautious. She doesn't want the, the, the thing to decock on her and spin in the face and hit her. And that's fine. She's, she's doing it right. She's just, she's figuring out the navigation of this system. Um, which, again, for me, um, when I take one out like this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand draw it. But again, that's really not an option for a lot of these. Now, this Matthews mission, sub one um, XR, she might actually be able to pull back. It's got an 80% let off on it, which is fantastic. But I'm betting she'd be close on it and she wouldn't be able to, to do it. So, um, you know, it's one of those kind of deals. And so I'm working on getting stuff done here the best I can with the camera and staying on her. But I can tell that she's, she's just kind of trying to figure it out. But she gets it cocked and there's going to be a lot more cocking today. We're going we're gonna to shoot quite a bit. So she picks up the handle there, and I think she's I think she's ready on this one to go out. So we're going to switch gears and get out onto the to the range here. We're going to set up at about 50 yards. We're going to start long, and we're going to start deep. Okay, um, you know these these in this price range, these crossbows are meant to do the distance. Um, you know, mission puts out there it'll hit 100 yards. I can tell you, I've done it. And obviously, being a sub one, supposed to be you know one inch 
or less. And, um, you know, fair, it can do it. And the Raven's the same way. These are, these are supposed to be very accurate, expensive crossbows. So we're going to push it out to the 50-yard mark. We're going to let her take some wax at it. Um, we're going to shoot some groups of three. Each time she's going to, you know, cock the bow herself. We'll even play around a little bit with some, you know, decocking just so she can get the feel of it. She's handling it quite well. Um, Safety-wise, she's, she's, she's making, you know, herself sit on a bunch of sandbags there and really be stable and, and feel comfortable about shooting, shooting it. Um, we're going to take another shot here. She's going to just keep going with it. But before she takes that shot, I wanted to, I wanted to film some of her, her table, um, cocking, you know, sometimes when you're in, you know, like a ground blind or you're in a deer stand up top, if you ever do, you know, need to, to cock these bows, you might not be pointing them down. I find that cocking a bow on a table, especially a crossbow, obviously, is 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 a little bit more tricky. So um, I wanted to try it. I wanted to kind of get the feel of it. Again, this one is removable, so you don't have to have it on there. But it's a little it's a little different to work with. It's it's I hate to say it in some regards, it's a little bit bulky. But again, you could just cock it back. You're ready to go hunting. Pop the thing off the bottom. Go out in the field with it off, and then if you have any difficulties out there, struggle through with the um, foot and hand pull version. Notice how she's picking it up a little bit there just to get a little muscle to get that thing back. But, you know, she's not breaking a sweat. Um, you know, she's, she's for a teenager of, of her age and caliber right now, she's, she's easily getting it, getting it in. So here she's getting a little quicker at backing it off and getting it off. I think she's just... Just takes time to get used to. By the time she does this 20, 25 times today and really gets a feel of these and gets shooting them, I think she'll be a lot faster at it. But again, I'm just trying to make it, um, you know, at least realistic for her as to how it would be. And that's why I'm not stepping in and helping her. I'm just kind of letting her fuddle through it. She's figuring it out. You have to keep your button on the bottom of this thing because it's kind of retractor style. When you let it go, it just sucks the sucks the little devils right in. But she's getting it. She's got it nice and stable again. She's getting back down on the bench. Um, we're going to let let another bolt here fly. And then once once we get a few of these downrange, we're shooting groups of three, I'll, I'll go down and, and show you how it's grouping. Now, again, this is 50 yards. Um, temperature out right now is probably about 40 degrees in the range. And there's no wind because it's indoors. It's just not heated. She's pushing 50 yards. And uh, she's doing a good job for the for the first time on these on these um, crossbows. But again, we're not going for perfect accuracy. We're just going for groups with her and kind of see how she does. And remember, this is not sighted particularly for her. I've been on these crossbows for the last you know few months, so they're they're much more sighted for me. So you're going to see that here. So there, she got it done. She fired another bolt off. Um, I think right now she's got three down range at this point when we were filming. So we're going to, um, you know, just make sure that that crossbow is steady and stable down there. And we're going to walk our way down here, get her butt down here and, and see how she did. When we get down here a ways, we're going to be shooting into our yellow, was it, morale target, just because we know it can stop that kind of bolt. Yeah, this is a nice group. Um, again, this is... This is literally only her, you know, third and fourth time here pulling this crossbow. And that's a nice group for 50 yards for me. Anytime you take a woman who's a brand new shooter on a crossbow and you get a group like that, um, that's workable. Back into the shop here. We're switching gears and I've handed her the Raven. There are 26. There's a little bit of struggle there to get that wrench off, but the Raven does carry its wrench. Remember, it is um, cocking devices built into it. Um, she's a little bit more used to that. The second crossbow that she's had um, had a built-in. First one was more of a clamp on again. She's figuring out this back button style. So on the Ravens, you have to push your thumb in the back of these to um, release them to let the cocking device come down and, and grab it. And it's a little tricky because you got to put the handle on and take some pressure off the button to to get the button all the way in to get it get it to release and what she's struggling with here is she's just trying to figure it out 
And again, I'm not trying to give her much advice. I'm just trying to let her kind of work with it, if you know what I mean, and, and, and get it. This one also doesn't have a foothold position on it like other ones do. So this is a little different to her. So she's she's not quite sure what to think. And she actually has to bend over quite a ways. One of the downsides to the to the smaller crossbow is kind of got to bend down there to do it. But um, she is she is getting it on. She's 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 figuring it out. She's got it on. She's got it down. And I personally like the the ribbon style of this. I I like how smooth it cranks too. I don't like the noise it makes. I don't know why they did that. I mean, I think they should have made it so that it's got the safety feature of stopping in position, but not making as much noise as it does. I find this crossbow to cock very noisy. But now, as you can see, it's probably under six inches when that thing is cocked up. This is a little compact devil. The only complaint I have with the Ravens, other than the noise, is they tend to burn through strings a bit. They're so tight and so short-based. Um, I just wish they made a string that lasted more than a couple of years for me because, boy, after a couple of years, you better change these suckers out or they're, they're going to snap on you and you can break a limb. Anyways, she's getting used to it. These are both sighted with the sights that came with them purchased um, and set for them. So there's nothing fancy. She's just turning on a little light so she can see on this one so she can play with a little more. She's getting herself set up. And she's doing, she was doing a good job. And we're going to shoot a lot of groups with this one, too. Um, and what we're going to do, and I'm not going to show it on the video, she's going to shoot three or four groups with the mission, then she shoots three or four groups with the raven, then she goes back to the mission and shoots three or four groups, and these are all sets of three, and then she turns around and does it with the raven. That way she's not waiting till the end when, when she's pretty fatigued after shooting all this to go to the next next crossbow. And I think that's going to make it, make it better for her. And remember, these things aren't perfectly set up for her. But I'm just trying to, you know, let her kind of shoot it and see what she thinks. So we're back here on the range. She's going to let this, this bolt fly and kind of see what she thinks of it. See what she does here. If I remember on this shot, these are all these are all good shots. A little bit there of a flinch. And not, not too sure she was quite expecting it. The trigger pull is different. Um, I personally love the trigger pull on the Missions Matthew. I think the trigger pull on the Raven is a little tougher, but again, it's a, it's a lighter bow. You feel it more, so forth. Notice how quickly now she's able to get it cocked or down to the to the to the grab point where she can cock it. Here she's, you know, cranking it up. The way this has got the handle on the back of it, and the way that the um, cocking cable comes down to grab it. It's pretty darn slick. Boy, if you had this on the mission and had it as quiet as the mission, boy, wouldn't you have a rock-solid device there. So I'm going to have her put another one in here. And again, she's just going to keep launching these. One thing I, I noticed with this, too, is she struggles a little bit to get those knocks to just kind of click in. They do have to click. They have to actually physically click in place. Um, but she gets it. Again, she figures it out pretty quick. She gets her hands into position. She gets on target, and she's letting it fly pretty decent. Um, you know, all in all, doing, you know, a lot of rounds with these today to really, you know, feel this out was is, is fantastic. When, when, you, when you got a person like this who's, you know, becoming a young woman and, and really wanting to spend a thousand bucks or so or even more on a bow, you want them to really try out these crossbows. So here's her, here's a group. I mean, this is, this is a group. It's, it's very similar to what she shot on the Matthews. The things I like about the Raven are, is that it's light and it's smaller. So it's easier for me to transport it and move it from place to place. And I also um, like that it's easier for me to cock it back up and reel it in because it's not as heavy. I noticed you were struggling with the cocking device. What'd you think of that? Yeah, it's hard for me to like get the cocking device to release and also when you keep your thumb on it, it's really hard for me to like hold it. It like wants to like come back and then doesn't release it properly, so it's really hard. Did you like where your wrench was? And I also, I don't like where my wrench is because I can't hold the bow and get it off and it's like really hard to push the button in. So I struggle to like, like when you're on the table to like get it off without like hurting it. Axel to Axel, what'd you think? 
I think it's really neat how it's really small and it's also like it fits on my table better and it just it's so much better for me especially like when I'm trying to like walk through small spaces because I don't hit it as much on things. Sure so when you're in the turkey blind it makes it easier for you but you're also a small shooter yeah. right so you're basically telling me that you know the cocking device is really nice that it's built in but where the handle storage is although great it's a little difficult to get off and to get it to decock to slide down and catch catch that is a little bit trickier for you but you like a lot of things about it did you notice um, an accuracy or power difference between the two no great all right what'd you like about the mission I like it about the mission is that when you like once I start to reel up the boat it's really really quiet and yeah there's no clicking sound like there yeah. is in the Raven that would be annoying if you had to take another shot wouldn't it yes. yeah and did you like the fact that that cocking device can come off and you can do a pull method by hand? Yeah, I do like that, especially also like if it ever fails, I don't have that stress that I, I'm done hunting because that's all I have on the boat. Correct, I get that. What did you What did you think about the, the axle to axle? It's really bulky. I think it's like hard to get on the table and stuff and it's like... Well, it's hard to like also like when I'm walking with it just in general it's very like big and awkward to carry sure. from place to place and that's a that's a smaller crossbow than some that are made now you, you were shooting before you were shooting what were you shooting before an oh. Avenger an oh, Avenger so you're in the Barrett line and that thing was big and bulky too wasn't it yeah compared to that how is the mission I'd say the mission is really good compared to that I like the mission better because like when I had mine, when it was out, it was out farther. Yeah, the so, the, yeah. the axis the, between those cams was way out there. Mm -hmm. It was really wide, wasn't it? Yeah. But this is still, this this particular mission, um, you know, is still more than obviously a little micro like that one. Yes. So for that small shooter, you'd still prefer that one. But then this one was quieter. What did you think about the power of both of them? It was, they were both really good, and they're both, like, really fun to shoot. Good. Now, they both came with the standard scopes on that the company sells them with. What did you think of that? Um, I like that scope better. I think it's easier to see through that scope. This scope, I always have to turn my lights on. Otherwise, like, I can't get a clear vision, so. Okay. So that's just a difference in scopes. And you measured them up. Obviously, the smaller one's going to fit you better, um, you know, with your strength and stuff. But as far as accuracy, how would you shoot them both? I both shot them about the uh, about the same. I was both just a little high of the bullseye where I was shooting. Oh, good job. So right now, if you had to buy one, which one would you buy? The Raven. Yeah. Well, that's fine. It fits you better. And I think that might work for a lot of women, which is, again, why I thought it would be good to compare these two um, since we've got the ability for you to shoot them for a while and uh, you to get out and hunt with them. So what's the next hunt that you're on with? Uh, going to be with the Raven? I'm going to do the spring turkey hunt. Awesome. Well, I hope you the best of luck on that and good success. And uh, let's hope that little raven does it for you. And, you know, it's fun putting on a video with you, Tabitha. Thanks.